Olympian Carrie Tellefson, and I'm going to take you through basic MyLabs decoder setup. In the first instructional video, we talked through equipment setup and basic decoder commands. In this video, we'll provide more in-depth information about decoder setup and configuration. Turn the decoder on by pressing the power button. The LED light above the button and the lights at the front of the decoder should turn on. Shortly after startup, when the decoder has found a GPS lock, the LCD screen will read GPS locked. Adjust time to GPS. Hit the select button to synchronize the decoder to GPS time. Depending on available GPS signal strength, it can take a while before this message appears. Start in the upper left-hand corner. If you are using CCNet, you will see the communication information, which tells you how the decoder is communicating with the timing and scoring software. CCNet is a MyLap server used to connect timing and scoring to a remote decoder. Next is the number of satellites, which tells you how many satellites you are connected to. Decoders require at least three satellites to acquire a GPS time. Once the time is locked, the satellites will be filled in black. Time of day is displayed as hour, minute, and second. The middle of the screen displays current messages. When there are no messages, it will show the last tag that has been detected and the selected profile. In the bottom left-hand corner, you will see a visual representation of which file is currently active on the device and how many reads are in that file. You will also see the sync status, which will be discussed in the timing and scoring video. Finally, we have the visual representation of the antennas attached to the device. An empty box is shown for each antenna. Boxes fill temporarily as bib tags are detected in their field. X's are shown to represent antennas that have been enabled but are not connected, while dashes represent antennas that are not enabled. Before a race, you'll want to ensure the decoder is set to the correct time zone. On the main screen, hit the scroll button. Scroll to general and press select. The word clock will be highlighted. Press select. Scroll to time zone and press select. Scroll through to select your desired time zone. Be sure to set the correct time zone on all of the decoders you'll be using at the event. The decoder is based on Greenwich Mean Time, so you'll have to adjust hours accordingly. After setting the time zone, select whether your time zone is on daylight savings or not. Under Profile, you can set your decoder to Main or Backup. If this is the first bib tag system the runners will encounter, set the profile to Main. If this is the second bib tag system the runners will encounter, set the profile to Backup. The main profile's priority is to measure the most accurate times. It detects on average 99.5% of the runners. The Backup profile's priority is to detect high volume. At large events, it will detect runners who might have been missed by the main line so that all runners are detected at least once. The scanner mode is for testing and registering tags before the event, individual tags only, at a short distance from the antenna. Expo mode is used for checking tags during packet pickup. Never set the profile to scanner or expo during the race. Time between same chip refers to the minimum time before reading a tag again after it re-enters the field. This time is measured in milliseconds. The default is set to 10,000 milliseconds which is 10 seconds. Under Number of Antennas, verify that the number in the middle of the screen matches the number of mats that are connected to the decoder. To connect to timing and scoring, you can use the decoder's modem on the CCNet server. Run an Ethernet cable from the decoder to a router or plug the decoder directly into your computer. To use the decoder's modem, select Communication. Select Server Communication and select GSM. Once this is selected, you can monitor the connection status in the upper left-hand corner of the resting decoder screen. Here you will see the letters M-I-C-T, which will become uppercase as each step of connecting completes. Each letter represents a different step of connecting. M is for modem. I is for internet. C is for CCNet and T is for timing and scoring. Once the first three connections have established themselves, you will see the message OK in the upper left-hand corner in their place, and the T will be represented on its own. 
To connect to CCNet using a router, you'll need a router with an internet connection. Connect an ethernet cable to one of the two ports on the decoder and plug it into the router. You can also connect to another decoder that is already connected to the router. Ensure that there is a connection between the router and the decoder by checking to see that both lights on the ethernet port light up. Once the decoder is connected to the router, select ethernet as your mode of communication. If you're not using the CCNet server, set the server communication to off. In this case, you would connect through a router or plug the ethernet cable directly to a computer. Once you have your connection method established, you will need to make sure that your files are ready for the race. A new file can be created by selecting Markers and Files. Create New File. If your system is at the start of the race, you'll need to capture the start time with an external plunger or by setting a gunshot marker. Plug the external plunger into the I.O. port. Press the plunger at the start of the race. To set the gunshot without a plunger, select Markers and Files and select New Gunshot with the start of the race. Markers can also be placed to separate data from different events or waves. The markers are visible in the timing and scoring software. Visit mylabs.com for more information or assistance, and have a great event.